Good morning. Lesson 6-4 is now one step multiplication, just like the last two lessons, except for we're dealing with multiplication, right? So yesterday we said that positive or adding is the opposite of subtraction or that subtraction is the opposite of addition. But now we're talking about multiplication. What's the opposite of multiplication? Yeah, division. And turns out division is the opposite of multiplication, okay? So let's look here. We've got 4 times a. Remember, a number next to a letter means times. So 4 times a equals 55. Okay, what's the inverse of times? Divide. So we're going to divide both sides by 4. And 4 divided by 4 is 1, and 1 times a is a. And then 55 divided by 4, if you're not sure what that is, 4 goes into 5 one time, which is 4, subtract 1 left over, bring down the 5. 4 goes into 15 three times, which is 12. <gasps> subtract, and you have 3 left over, that means 3 fourths. So it's 13 and 3 fourths. Okay, little division. All right, next example, number 1. Vincent and some friends shared the cost of a season ticket package for the local football team. So shared a cost, okay? The package cost $745, so the total is $745. I'm writing it right down there because they gave me a spot. The total cost is this, right? Each person contributed $186.25. $186.25 per person. Each person contributed that. So how many people were t contributing to this total? Well, this is times. So what's the opposite of times? Yeah, divide. So we're going to divide by 186.25. They do not give us a lot of room to work here. 186.25. And to speed this up. We'll grab our trusted calculator and it says 745, 745, divide 186.25. Sometimes it's good to check your screen, make sure you wrote it the same way you meant to, equals 4. P equals 4. So how many people total? 4 people. Vincent and 3 friends. Okay, let's try and solve this one. 84 equals 7 times x. Okay, so what's happening to the variable? It's being times by 7. What's the inverse of that? Divide 7. 84 divides 7, I think, is 12. It is 12. And 7x divide 7 is x. Okay, so again, a lot like the last two lessons. But now you're dealing with multiplication, and then you have to do division. So let's just talk real quick about fractions, because I think you're just going to need a little reminder about what to do. So let's do this one. It doesn't have any examples, because you can read example 3 on your own. But let's do this one. So we have 4 fifths times k equals 1 third. Well, what are we multiplying by? We're multiplying by 4 fifths. So that means we need to divide by 4 fifths, divide by 4 fifths. And here's what a lot of students do wrong. I'm going to write it on a sticky note so I don't have to keep it in my book. I can throw it in the trash. Students will say, oh, 4 fifths and divide 1 third. But this is backwards. This does not say 4 fifths divided by 1 third. Wrong. What it says is 1 third divided by 4 fifths. And order matters in this case because of the standard algorithm that we learned. In order to divide fractions, you need to multiply the original by the reciprocal. This one is the one that gets reciprocated. And then multiply straight across. A 1 times 5 is 5, and 3 times 4 is 12. 5 twelfths. K equals 5 over 12. Okay, so just a quick reminder about how to divide fractions. All right, good luck.